I'm Danielle Scott, and I'm from Sun and Meats in Green Creek, Idaho. We're a custom processing facility, so we do custom processing on hogs and beef, some lambs and some goats. What is most exciting to you about the industry right now? Um, I would just say all the innovation, all the products that they have to make it run smoother. A lot of the machines that they come out with that make you know different steps of the process a lot quicker. What's keeping you awake at night? You know, finding future employees is one of the biggest thing. Yeah. Finding skilled employees is another hard part of it. You know, there's not a whole people, that, a lot of people that want to work this hard. Who are your customers exactly? Uh, most of our customers are local. A lot of people that raise their own animals, and then we have some that are a little bit less local that bring animals to us to get butchered for uh, stuff that they've already sold to people on the live animal. What do you most wish that your customers could better understand about your business? A lot of it is understanding, you know, what they get out of their animal, like the dressing percentages, the shrink weight on it. You know, they bring us a thousand pound animal, they don't get a thousand pounds of meat back. Mm -hmm. You know, they lose weight to the hide, you know, awful, mm -hmm. all sorts of things that cause shrink in that animal, and they expect to get back, you know, so much product, and they don't. You know, we're kind of in a point where we're, if we had another worker, we could take on more. But, you know, the hard part too, it's more of a seasonal job, where, you know, the fall we're really, really busy, Come spring and summer, we slow down. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to employ somebody too when you're only part time. Can you tell us, Dee, a little bit more about your operation and what you do? You bet. We're a custom uh, meat shop in Walla Walla, Washington. We have a mobile butcher uh, unit that goes out to the farms, and we're also licensed in <laughs> Oregon. And we uh, are only custom um, in our shop, so we don't wholesale. We do have a small retail uh, freezer that we use, mm -hmm. um, so that's pretty much it. We do game. We do mm -hmm. beef, pork, lamb, goat. What is most exciting to you about the industry right now? Kind of the renewal of people wanting to know where their meat's coming from and their, their the product that they're eating, mm -hmm. so they're wanting to buy local. And what is keeping you awake at night? I would say sometimes dealing with the multiple personalities that you have to deal with. Um, on the employee side. Can you share who your main customers are? The local growers mostly mm -hmm. in our area. And what would you most wish that your customers could better understand about your business? How labor intensive it is. Do you believe that there's a need for more processors in the Northwest and if so what kind? Slaughter? I do. Further Slaughtering. processing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, slaughtering. And in our area we could use a USDA plant that can slaughter um, that we could get product from in further processing, mm -hmm. but right now it's it's the money, it has so much money to get up one up and going in our area. What has been most exciting to you about the conference this week? Participation from everybody. We have people here from four states. Uh, we have just record, record number of suppliers, record number of members, and new members. Everybody's been wonderful to sit and visit and share ideas and thoughts and concerns. So we're here with Ken Broughton of Farm to Market Pork in Montana. Can you share a little bit about where your operation is and what you guys do exactly? Yeah, we're um, in the northwest part of Montana. Um, we started raising hogs back in 1976. My dad started the operation. And um, we just slowly got into the meat industry, um, realized that was a great way to market our animals. What is most exciting to you about the industry right now? You know, it's, it's exciting to see customers that are truly engaged and wanting to know where their meat is coming from. It's nice to have intelligent conversations with people and know they truly appreciate your, your products. What's keeping you awake at night? It's really trying to keep up with regulations and meet the customers' demands as well as meet regulations of our state inspectors. Mm -hmm. Preservatives and cured agents are the biggest thing. Yeah. Um, we've done some preliminary work with celery powder, um, but really having something that that our inspectors will put it out there and say, hey, this is a good product, you guys can sell it all you want. They're basically telling us I assume all the risk myself. And mm. it's as a business that's been around for 40 years, it's I don't want to do something that would end up messing that up. Can you uh, share who your customers are? You know, we have a very local, loyal customer base. Um, I'll see the same customers come in every week. Um, people just from the community, a lot of families, a lot of old retired couples um, that just want good meat. What do you wish that your customers could better understand about your business? 
Um, I think they risk or understand about the heart, the trials of raising animals. Um, animals are very susceptible to diseases and um, the, the elements. What, what an animal thinks, uh, to think like an animal, make sure they're truly happy. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of our customers come to us and ask us questions about how our animals are raised. And we want to make sure we're, we've raised the animals for a long time and we're trying to portray that we're trying to do it the best way we can in our do environment. You, do you think that there's a need for more processors in the Northwest? And if so, what kind? You know, I, we see the biggest need in, in slaughter of custom animals. Every, a lot of the backyard farmers are getting, getting more and more, especially in the fall. Those, those facilities are filling up. Yeah, my name is Kevin Trosclair and I own Mountain View Custom Meats and I'm in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho and we are primarily a custom meat operation. Oh, I just think just the, the whole movement of the, the farm to table and just uh, the sustainability of just the small producer that's, that's coming back. And so, and the interest in charcuterie and, and just the meat industry now is an art. Uh, primarily, keep, what's keeping me awake at night is skilled labor. Um, and those who, um, that finding someone who wants to learn a trade. Mm -hmm. So lack of labor is a real challenge for yeah, you? lack of labor. My primary customers are custom, um, and what that means is, is they grow the animal um, and they bring it to me to process for them. Uh, the other thing, the other item, uh, the other customers that we have are, of course, wild game, um, and then also those wanting animals, and we link custom growers with customers as well. Awesome. Well, I think that just understanding yields mm -hmm. and understanding, um, I guess, results of growing methods. Mm -hmm. So really, if you know, there's a, of course, there's a big push for grass-fed animals um, and people don't understand the ramifications of just grass feeding and what, what the result is of grass mm -hmm. feeding. and and that it takes longer to finish an animal on grass than it does a standard green fed animal. So are you seeing some carcasses that don't don't look so great or don't oh, yeah. have enough fat cover on right. them? Well, we're see I'm seeing people, you know, that now they're starting, there's interest in Wagyu beef, you know, Japanese style beef, mm -hmm. um, which is a slower, you know, animal to finish. Well, mm -hmm. people are saying they want to bring in a Wagyu beef at 14 months that's been grass fed. Well, that's a total conflict of you know interest on that animal mm -hmm. uh, because they're a slow growing, slow finishing animal to begin with, um, and they're bred to marble, mm -hmm. and that happens with grain or you know mm -hmm. protein. Grain and time, huh? Yeah. So they need to finish or, them longer. Yeah, or even alfalfa and mm -hmm. time, but it, it ha they need protein. Yeah. And. Do you believe there's a need for more processors in the Northwest? And if so, what kind? Slaughter, uh, cut and wrap, uh, retail, what, what kind of processing? All the above. All of the above? All the above. I think there's an, a need for more processors. I think there's a need, uh, just specifically in this area, there's seven custom processors and we're all over 50. Mm. And we need to replace ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I have a business right now that's that's the only limit to my business is the staffing that I can find. And the biggest challenge for us is we're not full time, mm -hmm. 365 days a year. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're cyclical mm -hmm. um, and we're seasonal. Mm -hmm. And so maintaining, you know, labor yeah. at that type of, with that type of business is a, is a challenge. Speaking of that, do you have any succession plans or do you imagine someday you'll, you'll sell your business or pass it on to the next generation? Or? I don't have succession plans. Mm. I, um, my kids aren't interested mm. and um, at this point I don't have a succession plan. I don't see uh, me selling the business um, just with location and, and that. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's, it would be pretty tough. Mm -hmm. You never know. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't, I don't see it. Yeah. So. Well, thank you for your time. Okay, thanks. The operation is Nunnell Springs Poultry, and we're out of Willamina, Oregon. And uh, what we're, uh, we're a custom processor, um, and we process all kinds of poultry for folks that then can be turned around and resold to the general public, stores, restaurants, et cetera. So what is most exciting to you about the industry right now? 
I'd have to say, for me, I, I enjoyed the part of, of the processing take and the whole bird and, and being able to take something live, do the whole process and present back a very clean, edible, high standard quality piece of meat that can be, you know, something that can be showed off. What's keeping you awake at night? Trying to find the right help. Um, is number one. Who are your customers exactly? It, it ranges from um, basically that backyard for farmers that live in in town that have you know anywhere from two to five chickens to um, farmers ranchers that may start out with in the hundreds or they may jump to the thousand mark and start raising in, in, in large quantities. What do you wish your customers could better understand about your business? The best thing that I would be would be the education part of, um, I also, you know, we have a processing part with the educating the grower so they can come out with a much better product. Do you believe there's a need for more processors in the Northwest and if so, what kind of slaughter or processing is needed? <clears throat> I believe there's a need for more processes, period. And I don't care if it's poultry, rabbit, uh, big, bigger animals, beef and hogs, even even the game processing, deer and elk. Uh, it's just uh, there's few, fewer and fewer of us out there. Um, and just um, having people know that skill, you know, it's a skilled trade. So mainly we do retail is our bread and butter. Um, a lot of boards coming in, pallets of meat coming in every day. We do about three to four pallets every day. Just turn a lot of product. That's mainly what we do. A lot of game animals. And we do about a thousand head every year. Um, and also we do a little bit of custom. Pretty much anything we can make money on, really. We have custom cutting licenses and then also retail licenses. What is most exciting to you about the industry right now? Um, right now the, the potential for our growth, um, you know, the big farm to table movement is a, is a huge thing right now and really educating our consumers. What is keeping you awake at night? Where we're headed and who's going to help us get there really, you know, I mean, we're always looking for new people who have a drive and a passion for what we're doing. What do you most wish that your customers could better understand about your business? I, I would say, you know, the, the cost of running the business, you know, we get the, the question all the time, why did the bacon go up? Mm -hmm. Well, we, we, in the Portland metro area, our, our minimum wage is going up, yeah. so we can think, you know, the powers that be for that, mm -hmm. or whatever those issues are, because having a commodity come in the back door and go out the front door, mm -hmm. our prices go up and down, just mm -hmm. like everything else. Do you think that there is a lack of processors in the Northwest, or, or do we need more? You know, there could always be more, more people. Um, you know, there's, there's enough work to go around, absolutely. I, I would say that we're at a, a great number right now, but I would love to see see more. I mean, within the last two years, I can think of three processors specifically in our area who've gone out of business. So we're feeling the pressure, you know, to do more custom, to mm -hmm. do more of these things because now these animals are having a hard time finding a destination, you know, and that's a big struggle. So. We could always have more, absolutely. How do you think that we could strengthen the meat supply chain in the Northwest? What are like the key things that are necessary? Um, well, this organization, for, for one, is a, is a huge part of it. And, you know, being a community to where we can voice, you know, things that, or issues that we have, like today at the, the business meeting. My husband and I have a custom plant in Jefferson, Oregon, right off of I-5, exit 243. Um, we do custom processing of um, beef and pork and lamb. We also do sausage processing of game meat. We do not take whole carcasses, but we are happy to make anything uh, of the sausage that we make. Um, bring it to us bone-free, fat-free, gallon-sized Ziploc bags, 20-pound minimum. We also have retail items for um, fresh, fresh frozen beef, pork, boneless, skinless chicken breast, and smoked um, products.
What is most exciting to you about the industry right now? Um, exciting is our customers coming in and asking questions and getting to know what we do and um, seeing people grow up in it and wanting to know where their food comes from. Mm -hmm. Um, excited about what we're doing. What is keeping you awake at night? Um, the lack of people that do what I do. <laughs> We've had several plants close in our area yeah. due to employee not having enough people that want to work hard. Mm -hmm. People need to realize this is hard work. Mm -hmm. You can't learn how to butcher by coming and seeing me for mm -hmm. four hours a day and mm -hmm. presto you're there. Mm -hmm. You can learn a lot but you're not going to know how to do it efficiently and cost effective and we try to get the best product out at a reasonable price mm -hmm. for the customer. What do you most wish that your customers could better understand about your business? Um, I guess it would be best for them to understand that it, it is hard work and not to scare anybody away. It's enjoyable work. Mm -hmm. We work hard because we like to work hard, mm -hmm. but that's what the job demands. Mm -hmm. And in that same respect that um, we try to accommodate as many of their needs as possible, but to be realistic, I can't cut, if I'm doing a split half, mm -hmm. I can't cut your steak three quarters mm -hmm. inch and yours inch and a half because mm -hmm. it's not going to be fair. Mm -hmm. And we need to be make it fair for everybody mm -hmm. and, and try to accommodate as much as possible. Do you think that there's a need for more processors in the Northwest? Processors are a need. It is um, almost a dying art. Mm -hmm. and, and the key is, is to do the job that you want us to do, mm -hmm. we need to make sure that we are able to do it. What is most exciting to you about the industry right now? I really enjoy the fact, or what is exciting to me is seeing the growth potential in the small independent um, sales of locally grown meats, um, direct to consumer sales. Mm -hmm. Conversely, what's keeping you awake at night? Exactly the same thing, the opportunities of sales uh, for small independent um, consumer purchase sales and things of that nature. Uh, <clears throat> the complexities of that part of the business. Um, are, are monumental for, for small operators. Mm -hmm. And that comes with uh, regulatory compliance to packaging and labeling, um, to working with folks who've never been in the meat industry trying to sell meat. Mm -hmm. Cold storage, distribution, Cold transportation. Cold storage, distribution, mm -hmm. the, whole, the whole gamut of the whole program from cutting instructions, doing market segment that you're trying to sell to, mm -hmm. um, to the regulatory compliance and on all of it, how it affects everything. Mm -hmm. So who are your customers exactly at Heritage Meats? Our, our, we have a branded product line and our majority of our sales are go to our, our branded lines of products in small independent food co-ops and online sales. Uh, we also wholesale directly to restaurants where we do whole carcass animal sales mm -hmm. to uh, primal cuts, dry aging. Um, we also work and make um, custom blended sausages for them. Our second level would be our, our, our custom exempt processing for direct marketers. Mm -hmm. um, we do also do custom exempt processing and we have retail sales. And then you also do USDA processing uh, yes. for farmers as yeah, well. Yeah, and our USDA processing for farmers. What do you most wish that your customers could better understand about your business? Um, the amount of effort it takes to produce products for them, um, to, for them to sell under their own brand. Um, the amount of work, there's such a disconnect from raising them to processing and they're having a better understanding what it takes to produce products for them. Um, it's one of the biggest challenges we have. Do you believe that there's a need for more processors in the in the Northwest? And if so, what kinds? And none of I can those? see a small USD poultry um, and small animal slaughter would be um, helpful. What I really, what we really need is we need staffing. We need employees. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe the the shops are are there mm -hmm. for the customer base. Um, but we also need to have customers that don't try to do everything all at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one of the challenges as a processor is being able to handle the ebbs and flow of the industry and staffing year-round employees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for your time, Tracy. No problem. Take care.